Google thinks they have this whole digital advertising privacy Armageddon thing completely figured out. They've developed a technology that they've been testing for a couple of years that they think will eliminate any of the problems that are happening right now with tracking with iOS 14. And now that Google has said that they're not gonna track anybody individually, ever again or build anything that will they think they have the answer it's called flock and i'm going to explain this extremely complicated thing in a very simple way okay if you're new to the channel please hit the like button so more people can see this it's a very important thing in the marketing industry right now and uh, subscribe I try to give value like this all the time okay so first of all I want to go ahead and say that this is not necessarily the be-all end-all fix to everything in fact a lot of people think that this is full of crap and that it's not actually gonna help at all in fact it might not even be good some people say. Um, so let me just explain exactly what Flock is. Flock stands for the Federated Learning of Cohorts, which sounds kind of like some UN meeting that is secret and only special people can join. I have no idea why they called it that. Probably programming language that's above my pay grade or knowledge or skill. So what is Flock? Basically, super complicated idea that can boil down into this. Google puts something in your browser, the Chrome browser, and this is where one of the big flaws is. The Chrome browser tracks your information locally on your computer. So as you do things on your computer, that information is stored on your computer. And then it is beamed to a server, but it's encrypted on the way there. So it collects data about what you do in your browser, it puts it on your hard drive, then it sends that information back to Google, apparently. And then once it gets to Google, they don't know who you are personally. They just know what you, a human being, has done. And over time, all of this data is going to allow you and what you do to be grouped with other users that do similar things as you and then they can target people based on that. I know this is a complicated concept, so let me show you visually how this works. Now I wanna once again highlight here that this is extremely complicated and I am boiling it down into a very simple way so that you can understand what's going on. So basically what Google has proposed is that it's a switch that's on in your browser. I want to be clear here, Chrome browser right now. And that means that 50% of the market share being Safari, they're not going to have it, maybe ever, but we'll have to see how things evolve here because Apple has their own reasons for rolling out these privacy measures. So it's on the browser and it basically collects your browsing data, right? So on your computer, if we draw a computer, I'll draw one that looks like a Steve Jobs Mac from 1981, <laughs> uh, that information is collected on your computer, right? So information collected. And that is locally on your hard drive. So nobody can see it yet, it's just happening on your hard drive. Your history, your browsing data. You go somewhere, you don't need a third party cookie to track it, it's actually on your computer then that information gets processed on your computer before it gets sent to the servers to be used. And what happens when they're processing it? That means they are encrypting it, doing things like adding noise <laughs> and stuff like that so that basically the bottom line is nobody knows who you are. They know what you do. They know that some human did these things and has this specific history and profile. However, you, any unique identifiers about you are completely hidden. So by the time it gets to the servers, 
to be able to be used by advertisers, then we're in a situation where everybody is anonymous. But there are, we just know that there are humans out there. We know how many of them there are, how few of them there are. They're basically creating these audiences. So what's up with those audiences? So let me minimize my, my, myself here. Um, so what are these audiences? So basically once the information gets from the server, gets from the computer to the server, people start getting organized. Almost like there's a bunch of red, blue, green, yellow marbles being poured in to this big bucket, and then Google is taking them out one by one and sorting them into color groups. And so what we have here is interest groups that emerge. In fact, why don't we just use different colors to better visualize it? So you're sorted in to these different groups based on your specific behaviors, which can then be targeted. So as you're targeting these behaviors, advertisers then have information that where they can directly target. So these people are specifically interested in the sport of cricket. Then they get that stamp and then they can be targeted based on those interests. So at the end of the day, it's really not gonna be a whole lot different than Facebook interest targeting or Google affinity targeting. Really, it's extremely similar. It's just that, well, the platforms, Google, does not actually know your name, if that makes sense. So then you're allowed to target people based on those things. Um, and it's groups of people, but no individual information, in theory, is passed from your computer to the server. All we know is that as people are inside of these groups, they are anonymous. And then as you target those people, these all these anonymous humans are put into these groups, and those anonymous humans are then targeted, okay? Now this does not solve retargeting. This does not solve retargeting at all. You still need third, uh, third party cookies to make that work. And since third party cookies are getting eliminated altogether, then you're kind of screwed a little bit unless you have something like Clavio or another CRM running. Now, Google does know in their Flock documentation that they and others are working on potential retargeting possibilities. But for right now, what I would recommend to you is to get a CRM going and be collecting as many email addresses as possible, then you can turn those into Facebook custom audiences. What are the problems with Flock? Well, there's a few that I'm seeing, and this is just off the top of my head, just like telling you how I feel about it based on the data that I know. And this is privacy information aside. If we assume that it is going to cover up people's privacy and do a good job uh, with protecting privacy, um, which some would not make that assumption, but if we assume that, some of the problems that I'm seeing are this. One, since it appears to be largely browser-based, that means, because it's actually called the privacy sandbox built into Chrome, and so since 50% of the market share is Apple Safari, then aren't we just gonna be in the same problem as iOS 14? Unless Google can lobby to Apple to get Apple Safari to actually adopt this, which might be a tough sell because of course Apple wins out of the whole iOS 14 thing because they can start their own ad network, which is based on people doing things in their own platforms and then selling advertising based on that. So Google is going to have to convince an entire industry to shift over, not just people. Uh, and also, this is only Google. So, uh, so it's not Facebook, it's not Pinterest, it's not Twitter, it's not any of these. And since that's the case, really we're just talking about Google search ads, we're talking about YouTube, we're talking about things like that. And what we're not, Google shopping ads obviously, and uh, what we're not talking about is any of the other platforms. So once again, if Flock is adopted as a model across the industry, then we have a different question here. But right now, it's 
So it, I, I would say that it's beyond theoretical because Google has tested this and they say that it is going to lead to 95% of the conversions that you used to have, which is fantastic, but it's just Google and you have to, you have to use Chrome. Hmm, okay. And of course, there's no retargeting. So there are all sorts of issues here. If you want to know how I'm thinking about using retargeting in, in the I, post iOS 14 days, click this video over here. And if you want to know more about the iOS 14 privacy lockdown that is really starting all of these crazy debates, you can click this video over here. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.